In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this website for free using WordPress.com. This is a one-page business website, perfect for just about any kind of business. In this example, I'm using a cafe, but if you just change the images and put in your own content, it could really fit any kind of business. I'm Tim from RealWebsiteHints.com, and I wanna help you make great websites and find the best and easiest way to do it. If you wanna see what my current recommendation is for the best and easiest way to make a flexible website, check out this video right here, or head over to realwebsitehints.com slash best website. If you just wanna learn how to make this gorgeous website, stick around, and I'm gonna show you how to do it step by step right now. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we need to do is uh, click our browser over to wordpress.com, and you wanna do create a website. And then we're going to click on Get Started. And then you can go ahead and pick a theme here. The theme that I chose is not here, so we can actually skip this step and click on Skip. And if you have a domain name that you're going to use, um, they're going to charge you money. But in this example, I want to show you how to make a completely free website. So to do that, our domain name is going to be um, something like your website, or here they have example.wordpress.com. If you want your own domain name, you know, like Google has their own domain name of google.com, so if you want yourbusiness.com, you need to uh, pay them some money, um, $18, because you have to register your domain name and then have them host it and set it up for you. But for right now, we're just going to do a free website. So go ahead and type in your name. I'm going to choose real realwebsitehints.com, whoops, realwebsitehints.wordpress.com. And that one's free, as you can see here, so we'll click on Select. And then we're going to stick with the free plan. And we're going to enter in your email address. Mine is tim at real, realwebsitehints.com. Just go ahead and enter in a password. And then click on Create My Account. So here we are where we're going to build our website. This here is showing what our website is going to look like right now. And as you can see, there's nothing to see there. Um, and to start building, we click over here on My Site. And you'll find that on WordPress.com, uh, this My Site menu is pretty much everywhere. Although I noticed that as I was working on uh, this tutorial, that they're still using the old WP admin dashboard on some sections of this website. So we might see that pop up, but it looks like they're mostly transitioning to this My Site menu for adjusting your web page. It's probably not important to you, but just a little heads up if you see a different menu here for making these changes. Now, when it comes to building websites with WordPress, and that's WordPress.com or WordPress.org, where you download the WordPress files to your own server of your choosing. You'll find that when you're adding content to pages or blog posts um, or adjusting the settings, almost all of that is the same for every single WordPress website. Where you get a lot of variation is in the design settings of the website. And the design settings are almost completely dictated by which theme you have installed on your website. And so there's a just wide variety of controls for adjusting the look of your website depending on what theme you use. And some are really easy to use and some are a little bit more difficult. So let's go ahead and pick the theme that I've chosen for this tutorial. And that's the, I believe it's called Peak Cafe theme or the Peak theme. So go ahead and we'll click on this right here. Another really important thing to look at when you're looking at themes, um, and this is because it's something that Google has started really looking into, is making sure that the website works on any device, so whether that's a phone or a tablet or on a computer. As you can see here, they've got these buttons up here to show you what the theme will look like on different devices. So this is sort of what the theme would look like on a tablet device or on a phone and then on a computer. And it's really important when you're building a website to make sure that your website works and looks great on all of those devices because if you want to be found on Google or other search engines, that's going to be something that's going to be very important. And as you can see, it's very similar um, to the website that I created. I'm basically using the same idea they had in their demo, and I'm going to show you how to do it because it's not 100% intuitive on how you do a lot of these things and, and make it look this way. 
So let's go ahead and get started with this theme. And so to do that, we click on Try and Customize. So there we go. It's um, added that theme to our website. And you can see because you can already see the changes have taken place. And it's brought up this Customize menu. We're not going to customize anything right now, but we will click Save and Activate. And this will activate the theme on our website. And we want to click on Discover the Theme's Awesome Features. And as I said before, each theme has its own way of handling the design elements of your website. And so what you want to do with this page here, which has all of the instructions on how to use this theme, is you want to either print it out or download it and just set it aside so you can access it. So when you've got a question about what to do, uh, all the answers on how to make changes to this theme are right here. And I'm going to walk you through a lot of them, but it's a really good idea to print this out and save that. So go ahead and do that now. So to add the logo and uh, change the title of our website, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to My Site and then scroll down to Themes and then click on this button here that says Customize. This is where a lot, we're going to change a lot of the design settings for our website. So we're going to click on Site Title, Tagline, and Logo. And although Real Website Hints would probably be the name of this since I called the website Real Website Hints, um, but in this case uh, we're going to call this Cafe website. And we're going to upload a logo. Click on Select Files. And then we're going to go to Cafe website logo that I've already made. We do Set as Logo. There we go. And now if we don't want this uh, Cafe website title to appear, which we don't in this case, we're going to click on this Display Header Text. That's going to remove that. You can see over here on the right these changes taking effect. Um, and generally, you'll be able to see the changes that you make in the customized window take effect over here, but not for all settings. So just keep that in mind. If you don't see a change happen over here, just click the Save and Publish button. And then just close out of this. And then just check um, the changes that you've made. So that's just a, a, a quick tip there. Now let's go back to our My Website. And the next thing we need to do is add a couple of pages to make all the functionality work right. Right now, the website is set to show our blog posts here. But since we want to make a one-page website using this theme, we actually need this to display a series of pages, um, which they call panels. So let's go ahead and make a couple of pages here. So you can click on Pages. And then we can just click on Add right here. And so we're going to call this page the home page. And then all we do is click Publish. And then we do want to have a blog on this website so we can keep our customers or viewers up to date with what's going on. So what we'll do is we need to make another page for our blog posts. So we'll click over here to Pages. So And we'll click on Add Page. And we can call this page Latest Info. And then we're going to click on Publish to add that page. And then we're going to go back to Pages. And so now we're back on the My Site logo. And what we want to do is we're going to click on Customize here again. And then we want to do Static Front Page. And we want to change this to a static page. So we'll change it to that home page that we just created for our front page. And then we'll change this Post page to the Latest Info page. And we don't have to add anything to the latest info page. It'll just automatically show our blog posts um, in order as we publish them. And it's always really important to remember, after you make any changes over here, to click the Save and Publish button. If you don't do that, you won't save your changes. I've done that many times, and it's been very frustrating. So then click the X here. And let's just see how that affected the front page of our website. And you can see here, we've got our logo up here and then we've got these odd share buttons which we're going to need to get rid of and I'll show you how to do that right now and then we've got just this the footer section of our website so let's go ahead and get rid of these weird share buttons because we don't like those on our website it's not going to look good on our one page website so we're going to click on the configure sharing and we're going to click on sharing buttons and then we're going to uncheck both of these things. And we're going to click on Show Sharing Buttons. We can leave them on Posts, because that might be appropriate, depending on if you want to have sharing buttons on your posts. But on Pages, we're going to turn that off. And then we're going to click on Save Changes here. 
And just for good measure, we'll click on Save Changes here. Make sure that that had took effect, which it did. We'll click on My Website. And the next step is to add a header image to go along with our cafe website logo. So we're going to click on Themes, Customize. And as you can see here, they suggest a header size of 1400 by 400 pixels. And it's really important when you're using this theme for all of the backgrounds, for all of the panels that you're going to create, that all of them have a width of 1400. So let's go ahead and add a new image. Load files, select files. And I've already pre created all of these background images. So we're just going to go ahead and add this one here. And we're going to click select and crop because they're going to crop it to 400. This. So it's going to be our header and our footer image, as you can see here. And let's go ahead and create our first panel, which will show up here. So we can click on either the Edit Page button here. So we get that home page that we created, and that's going to be the very first panel on our website. Let me just put some text in here for now. And then um, if you wanted to add some buttons, like are shown in the example, you want to look at the instructions for the theme. And they've given you some instructions on how to add buttons. They've already designed uh, the buttons that you saw in the demo. And as you can see right here, here are the instructions to add a button. And this is the HTML information for adding a button. And it, where there's little hashes here, if you wanted to, to link to someplace, that's where you would add the link. And we've got two different styles of buttons. So one is this blue button, and then the other one is this white button. And to add it, all you've got to do is just copy this here, right click, and then do copy. Just move this aside. And now we've got the code information. And you need to click over to HTML here. So that since it's HTML code, we need to write it in there as HTML. If you put it in here, it, you'll just see the actual code on your website, not the button. So click on HTML. And we can actually remove that HTML code there. We don't need it. And then click Paste. And if you put in a hash like this, it'll make this button a placeholder. But if you actually want it to go to a specific page, you would type in the URL of that page right in here. And we'll add that second button right next to there. And then we'll go back to visual. And let's put a space in between those two. There we go. And as you can see here on the back end, you're not going to see the actual buttons. You're just going to see the link. But when we go back to the front, you will see them as actual buttons. And then to add the background image for that first panel, we select this featured image over here. And you click on set featured image. We're going to add a new image. And we're going to use this image as our image. Click on open. And then click set featured image. There you go. You can see it set up here. And so we've already created this page. Um, we just want to click on Update, and that's going to save our settings. All right, so let's go and see our changes. So we just click on here. This will take us to the home page of our website. And there we go. So now you can see that we've got the logo of our website. We've got this um, you know, nice background image. And if you're wondering where I got all of these images, they're actually all free to use images. And if you go to realwebsitehints.com slash free images, You'll find my post um, showing you several different places where you can find some great free image websites. Now we can see we've got a little bit of a problem here um, because these aren't centered. So let's go ahead and fix that. So to do that, we're going to click on Edit Page. So over here, um, what we want to do is we want to just highlight all of this text. And then we want to just click the Center button. And if you click on this button over here, it adds um, some more options that you can have for making changes to your page. So let's go ahead and click update to save those changes we just made. And let's check that out. There we go. Now it's all nice and centered. So now we've got this header, the top of our website, and a nice footer for our website. So let's go ahead and add another panel below this. So we'll click on my site, and we're going to add a new page, because on this theme, 
to add more panels, we create pages to, for each panel. So go ahead and click Add. So we'll create a page for our testimonials. We'll call it And then to make this display our testimonials that we're going to create here, we click on the page options and we change the default template to testimonials. And now this page is going to show us the testimonials on it. So go ahead and click on publish. And then we just create a couple of testimonials using this special section here for specifically for testimonials, and that's unique to this specific theme. So go ahead and click on testimonials, and we're going to add new. And now you can see here we're back on the traditional WordPress dashboard. So if you were making your website and you had downloaded um, WordPress from WordPress.org, this is what the dashboard would look like for making changes to your website. So we'll go ahead and add the customer's name here. Let's see if Rod and if you wanted to have a little bit of description about this person, um, the way that this theme works is you would add um, a little bit of code right next to it. It's pretty simple. You just uh, add this EM code and then say, or whatever you want to say about the person, and then you add this slash em at the end and in this theme this information here is going to um, appear underneath the name you can add the testimonial that the customer had there and if you set a featured image it'll have the image of that customer so let's go ahead and upload a file and then we'll click on publish and we'll add one more new testimonial just to fill up the space. And if you add a bunch of testimonials, this theme will automatically rotate them through randomly. So it'll show different testimonials every time somebody logs onto your website. So go ahead and add one more new testimonial by clicking Add New here. And we'll add a testimonial for me. And we'll add that little EM code here. Okay, and then we'll close that HTML. We'll add a little comment. And then we'll set a featured image. And then we'll do set as featured image. And we'll click publish. And then just to keep things consistent, we can actually um, adjust the pages from here, but to keep things consistent, we'll go back to the My Site, back to our pages over here, click on our what, are, what do our customers say. We'll add a featured image which is going to show up on the background in this theme. And then we'll click on set featured image. And then to make this a testimonial section, we're going to go to my site and then themes customize. And then in this theme here, what we do is we go to theme options. And this is how these panels here are how we add the different sections to our home page. So this first section here was changed in the site title, tagline, and logo section. Um, and then this first panel, click on theme options, we click on panel one, and then we add the content for that. And that's going to be the what do our customers say section. So we'll click on that. And as you can see here, it shows up uh, the very next thing. And then we can click on Save and Publish. Let's go ahead and add the next section of our website. For the next section, we're going to add a little blog section. So we already created that blog page. Um, and so to have it show up, we'll add a couple of blog posts. So I'm going to show you how to add some blog posts right now. So we'll go back. Well, actually, we can close this. And then we'll add a couple of new blog posts. Okay, and we'll add a little bit of content to that. And then if you wanted to add a featured image to this post, you could do that here. And the featured image on posts in this theme um, act differently. It's actually going to show a picture at the top of the post rather than uh, setting it as a background. But for this one here, I don't have a picture, so we won't add one. And we'll click on Publish. And then we'll add one more post just to sort of fill out that section. So we'll go back to Posts here, and we'll click Add Post. And we'll call this one Trivia Nights. 
We'll add some text here. And you know what? For this one here, we'll go ahead and just add a featured image so you can see what it looks like. So we'll click on featured image, set featured image, and we'll just go ahead and use this image again here. Set as featured image, and we'll click on publish. Now let's add this section to our home page. So we'll click on my site, click on themes, customize, and then we'll make this panel two. So we go to theme options, panel two, and then we set that to the latest info, which is what we set earlier as our posts page. So go ahead and click on that. And we'll just save and publish. And we'll close this and we'll go ahead and look up, see what our website looks like now. So we go, we've got the header for our website. We've got those cool buttons. We've got what do our customers say about us. And then we've got the latest info here. Oh, you know what? We didn't set a background for the latest info. So let's do that real quick. So we can click over here on edit page. And then we can do set featured image. And then we'll add a new picture. I like this one here. So we'll go ahead and open that. Set as featured image. Make sure you always click update. And now let's go ahead and see what our page looks like. There we go. I got latest info. I've got these two blog posts. And if you added another blog post, it would show up here. And then your most recent blog post posts would automatically show up on your front page. And if you click on one of these posts, so we can click on this post here and we'll see that um, featured image that we added and what that looks like. So we can click on read more. And you can see here the featured image got added up here. It's got the logo of our website on it. And that's just the default for how this theme treats featured images in blog posts. And then you can read this blog post here. And then we can go back to the home page by just clicking here. And then if you don't have a featured image, it's going to use that header image that we added earlier. So we click on best craft pizza in town. And then you can see that header image that we created earlier right there. And then you can see where your users can add, you know, they can share this on Facebook or they can add a comment on each post. And you can turn that off um, like I showed you earlier on in the settings. Let's just go ahead and continue and we're going to add a specialty section. I'll show you what it's going to look like. So we're going to go ahead and add this specialty section here um, with this map in the background and then this little specialty box here and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So let's go ahead and start with that. Let's go back to our website. We'll click on my site and we'll click on pages and we'll do add new. So we'll give this panel a title or this page a title. Now, uh, the way that this theme is set up to add that little box on the side um, requires us to use a little bit of HTML code. And they show us how to do it in the instructions for this theme. And as I said before, other themes for WordPress, um, one of the themes I really like is the uh, Divi theme by Elegant Themes, which is a paid theme and actually does not work with WordPress.com. It only works with your own separate WordPress website. But um, a lot of that stuff is very drag and drop, intuitive, easy to use. Uh, this theme is a little bit more tricky, but it does, it does give you really great results. So let's see how we do this. So what we need to do is give our page a title. We click on HTML over here, and then we're going to copy from the instructions the code for how to make that section. So the code for that little sidebox section is this here. It's div class overlay align right one word. And then what coders like to do oftentimes is every single piece of code that you put in for HTML has got to have a tag that shows the end of it. So I like to just add that right in the beginning. So we close the div tag here. This is what's called closing the tag. And I'm not really an excellent or awesome or amazing programmer. I just know a little bit of HTML code because when you're working with WordPress websites, it comes in really handy sometimes to know a little bit. Um, so there we go. So we've got this div uh, code here. So that's the front of it. And this is telling it what to look like. So overlay right, align right. And that this align right part is um, actually uh, referring to some CSS code that the theme designer has added in. And then for each section that we want to have 
um, the sort of title for they've added additional code for these icons um, and it talks tells you exactly how to add those icons in um, and this phone number so let's go ahead and add in the first line there and I'll show you how to do it um, to get that look we're gonna use the h3 tag or the heading 3 tag um, because that's the size and the color is already part of the theme uh, for this tag and then we're going to add the image, which is the icon. So we're going to use the image tag, which is I, and then class equals, and then quotation marks, fa space fa dash phone. And, you know, I'm not making this stuff up. It's all in the instructions for this theme. So if you're not sure of exactly what to write, um, you'll see it right there. And so that's the tag for the image, and then we're going to close that image tag, slash i, and then we're going to add the phone, which is the word phone that's going to show up, and then we're going to close that h3 tag. And then below that, we're going to put in the phone number, and then we're going to go on to our next line. And if you want to see what this looks like, you know, it's really important whenever you're writing code that everything's going to be exactly correct. So let's go ahead and publish that. And then we can click the preview button just to see how we're doing here. So there we go. You can see it's added that little box to the side. Of course, this is not how it's actually going to display on our website because this is showing it as its own page rather than as a panel. But this just shows us that we're on the right track. And then we can just close that preview. And then we'll just keep going. And I'm just going to copy and paste the rest of this in um, because it's basically all the same same methodology um, just repeated over and over again. And it's just we've got these diff different um, image classes which are all in the theme description. So all that information you've got from the theme description. So let's go ahead and update this page. So that's saving it. So we've got that information saved, and we'll set a featured image, and we'll use that map featured image. As I said before, I got all of these featured images um, from one site, but I've got a whole listing of where you can find free images at realwebsitehints.com slash free images. There we go. We'll set featured images, and I did um, reconfigure all of these images to have that 1400 pixel width so that they all look right on this web page, because with this specific theme you need to have all of the images for the backgrounds be exactly the same width that's really important to get great results different themes um, some different themes will automatically spread it out so that it's the white right width but this particular theme everything needs to be the same width we'll click on update and let's go ahead and add this panel to our website so we'll go to back to the pages and we'll click on themes customize and then we'll go to theme options again, and that was panel three. And we'll make that the visit or connect with us panel. So I'm gonna scroll down, and we can see that it's been added there. So that's great, our page is really coming along now. We'll click on save and publish. If you don't click on save and publish, it won't get saved and won't get added to our website. Now I wanna show you one more thing from the example. They've got this section here where they've got three different columns. And I'm going to show you how to do those three different columns using this theme. So what we need to do is we need to actually make four pages. The first page is going to serve as kind of the main container for this panel, and it's where the title for the panel is going to be. Then the other three pages are going to form the columns for this panel. So we'll go back to our site here, and we're going to go Add Page. We'll call this page Menu Hits, and we'll click Publish. And then we're going to create another new page. Click on Add. And we'll call this one Pizza. Kind of like pizza, but different. And we'll add a little bit of content to this page. I like to use this uh, just for fun. When I'm using filler content, there's this website called Bacon Ipsum. And it's just all text um, with meat in it. It's just kind of Kind of a fun little thing. So we'll go ahead and just copy some of this text. Go back to our site. And we'll add that in here. 
And then what we want to do is under page options, um, we don't want this to be a top level page. We want this to be under the menu hits page. So we click on that and then we click publish. And then we're going to add another new page. So go back to pages. We'll click add. And then we'll add some slightly different text just so that it looks a little bit different here. And we need to remember to, under page options, add that under the menu hits. And then click publish. And then we'll go ahead and we'll add one more. So we'll click on pages. We'll do add. And add some different text here. And then under page options, we'll put this under the menu hits section. And we'll click publish. And then actually on the menu hits page, let's go back and edit that because I think. Um, We'll add a featured image to this. So I'm going to upload a new image. And we'll use this image here. And we'll do set featured image. And we'll click on update. And then let's go ahead and add that to our next panel. So click on themes, customize. And then theme options, panel four. And menu hits. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, and what I forgot to do, go back and do that. What we need to do is actually we need to change this to the grid format on the menu hits page. So let's go ahead and do that. We can click on save and publish and just leave that right there. And close this. Go to pages. We'll go to menu hits. And we'll click on page options. And we'll change the template to grid page template. Click on update. And then we'll go to my site. And let's check that out. There we go. And for some reason, the background didn't stick. So let's see why that happened. We'll go to edit page. And for some reason, the featured image just didn't stick. So we'll just add that again. Click on update. It did seem like there was a problem saving it last time. There we go. So that should work now. We'll go back to my site. There we go. So we've got a great looking website. The only thing is we need to just fix this footer section and make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit less long. Oh, we've got actually two things to look at here. One is um, we can have a we can add a menu to our website, um, so we can go ahead and do that. And then the last thing is this footer section. Let's go ahead and look at the menu first. Actually, the website menu that is. So to do that, we go down here and we click on menus, and we've got this default menu here, which has added all of the pages that we've created. But if you wanted to create your own custom menu, you'd click on this here and you do add new menu. And then you can add different pages to your menu. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click on, we'll just put this in order. So what do our customers say? We'll add that item. Click and add a new item. And if you wanted it to cascade down, which we don't want to in this theme, but if you wanted it, if you had a different kind of theme and you wanted to add items um, underneath that, you'd add a child menu item and that would make like a drop down. Um, but we're, for this web page, we're not going to do that. We're just going to add another menu item and we can add that item below and we'll add the latest info and then we'll add another item and we'll add the visit or connect with us. And we'll add another item and we'll add the menu hits items and then we'll save that menu. Okay, so now we'll go back to our home page, and since it's set to the primary menu, and that's menu one, the one we just created, that will be on the top of our web page. So let's go ahead and see that. So there we go. So now we've got this menu that will connect to these different pages that we created. So it's got the menu sorted out. Now let's deal with that footer. So we'll go to back to my site, and then we're going to go to themes, customize, and we want to go to widgets. And um, widgets are either sidebars or the footers usually on most themes. Let's go ahead and go to widgets. 
we got the first, so we got the sidebar, and that's what sh was showing up in the blog post section when we looked at our blog posts. So if you wanted to adjust those settings there, you can adjust those there. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and look at what the widget area looks like. So just scroll down here. You can see here it's just in one column, but we've got these three widget areas. And typically these three widget areas, the first widget area will be on the left, the second one will be in the middle, and the third one will be on the right. But that only works if you have all three widget areas filled up with information in them. If you don't have that, it will just stay in the center like this. Let's just go ahead and look at the first widget area, and it's got all of this information in here. We don't want any of these things actually for our look so we're going to click on remove for all of these and so for the first widget area we're just going to put a little bit of information about our restaurant so we're going to use the text widget right there, and we're going to give it a title, and then we're going to add some content. And if we wanted to add another widget below that, we could do that here. In this case, we're not going to do that. So we'll go back go to the second footer area, and we'll just add this recent posts, and we can give it a title this from our blog and you can choose how many you want to show up and it's just going to show the title of it it's not going to show the whole thing um, and you can choose whether you want to show the post date or not and then we'll go back and we'll add a third widget area and for this we'll use the social media icons and then we can give it a title and then if you have your Facebook username or your Twitter username, you can add that in there. But if you just want to see what it's going to look like, um, you can just add the hash in there. So we'll just throw in a couple of these hashes so we can see what it's going to look like. And then we can scroll down here and say, so now you can see we've got um, those three widget areas on the bottom of our website. And make sure you click Save and Publish because if you don't, it won't save your changes. And there we go. So that's how you make a free website using WordPress.com. Of course, every different theme with WordPress is going to have some slightly different instructions on how you do it. But I do think this is a very good looking, fairly easy to make website, especially if you follow the instructions that I've given you here and then you look at the instructions for this theme. So I hope you found that very helpful. If you want to see my favorite current ways of making websites, head over to realwebsitehints.com slash bestwebsite. If you have any questions about making websites or what the easiest way to do something is or you want me to look into something, please go ahead and leave a comment below or visit me at realwebsitehints.com. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you get out there and make some great websites for your business. Thanks for watching.